All right, cool. Ready? Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode three of FOIA Side Chats. Uh, we are once again in the Muckrock office. Uh, I am Sean, projects editor at Muckrock. Hi, I'm Beryl. I'm a reporter here at Muckrock. Yeah, and uh, we are recording this on Earth Day, so find your local Earth and uh, tell you appreciate it. Uh, and in uh, keeping with the day, we're going to be talking today about one of Beryl's uh, recent pieces, recent pieces uh, on gas leaks. So, uh, Beryl, can you tell us what your uh, what your project was about, how it got got started, and what you found? Yeah. So I had gone to a talk in nearby, um, talking about a law that had recently been passed in Massachusetts to deal with gas leaks, which aren't um, really talked about or thought about unless um, something goes horribly wrong and something explodes. So you mean gas leaks in pipelines that are underground? Mm -hmm. So um, particularly on the East Coast and in the Northeast, um, gas that gas infrastructure is very old and like a lot of America's infrastructure um, hasn't had a lot of upkeep. Um, and so gas continuously leaks. And a study had been done by Senator Ed Markey a couple of years ago talking about how just um, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of natural gas is lost every year just through gas leaks. And um, the customers end up being upcharged. There are a lot of environmental concerns. And then there are so, custo so customers on the uh, kind of at the end of the pipe are still being charged for gas that never actually gets delivered because it's leaked in transit between uh, where it's like regional storage centers and uh, and the customers' homes. That's right. Weird. Okay. Correct. So they're still charging for the gasoline that they are sending off into the world, whether or not that gasoline actually makes you it. Gasoline or natural gas? Natural gas. Sorry. Okay. Um, so. Uh, a law was passed um, sort of after this report came out in which um, municipalities in Massachusetts are now allowed to request all of the information about where gas lines and leaks are located within their town. So each gas company is required to give this information to the Department of Public Utilities and they are sort of the, the holding ground for this information and then it's sort of incumbent upon each municipality to ask the Department of Public Utilities for that information so that when they go through and they start you know, repaving the roads or digging things up, they can see where the bad leaks are and start taking care of them and so they can better coordinate with the gas companies. Um, unfortunately, what appears to be happening is that nobody really knows that this law exists. So um, this is, so you found this once you started requesting, uh, requesting these reports? Right, so um, sort of the first round of <clears throat> this project involved just asking Middlesex County and um, Brookline, which is for reasons it's I don't not understand. It's not, yeah, it's so not worth Boston exploring. Area. Yeah, it's not worth exploring for <laughs> people who have never been to Brookline. But yeah. it's, it's right next to Boston, but in a totally different county. Right? Yeah, in the, way, in the way that Massachusetts works, um, doesn't matter. To greater so, Boston, though. Mm -hmm, yeah, so asking each of the municipalities whether, like, what their gas leak information was like, what information do they have, um, to sort of get a sense of whether or not they had been asking for the relevant information. Um, that was required, uh, that gas companies were required to keep, mm -hmm. uh, but each, municipal, each municipality had to take the step of asking for it rather than it being automatically reported to them. Correct. Interesting. Um, and part of the new law also require, like, makes it a requirement that um, the gas leaks are classified across companies in sort of a uniform way. So they are trying to take steps to make it sort of systematically easier for towns to take responsibility over the infrastructure within their borders. Um, but going through the greater Boston area and asking um, you know, for their information on gas leaks, a lot of places said either that they don't have that information, they were given outdated information by a gas company years ago, and then this is what they have. Um, and that was the most recent information that they had. Right. No, okay. Um, or, and, and so how, how recently was this report, or was the law passed? So the law was passed last session. So granted, it hasn't been around for a very, very long time, but it is sort of one of those things where if they don't know about it now, you know, it won't, it, it'll take so long, <laughs> Poss possibly, because it appears thus far that nobody really has a good sense of what this is or what this is supposed to do or how it's actually useful. Um, 
So, yeah, um, most towns told me either uh, there's some old stuff we have, we don't have anything, or you can go ask the gas company to see what they give you, um, which right. um, isn't particularly useful if it's their job. You know, it's not my job to know where each of the gas leaks are. It's it's somebody else's job to know that and then take care of that. So, well, that's um, interesting what that suggests for a lot of these municipalities uh, as far as they're not taking the step to to ask for the for the information that this law allows them to to do. Um, either it sounds like they're they're not aware that they're like that they have this authority to ask for it, or they're not acting on it. And those are those are both problematic in <laughs> in unique ways. So were there were there any municipalities that did that were able to give you information? Yes. So the only um, place where somebody had actually requested this information. So what I did was I also sent a separate request to the Department of Public Utilities asking at the them state at the state level, um, because they are the recipient of such requests, um, you know, who, who has actually asked for this information, give me all of the requests that you've received. And the first request um, that they actually received was last month in March from the Department of Environmental Protection in Boston. So they've received as far as um, as far as they know, and so as far as we know, they've received one request for this information based on the law that was passed. Across? Across the entire, entire state. state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, again, one of those things where, you know, it's, it's well and good that it was able to get through the legislature, um, but nobody appears to be using it. And even after speaking into the, to the Department of Environmental Protection, they said, you know, um, we got this information, but also it's not in a particularly useful format. So we're not really sure what we can do or how to make this useful just yet. Um, do they do they unpack that at all? Is that because of the way it's being reported to them by the gas companies, or I'm not entirely sure. It may just be sort of like a spreadsheet formatting issue. It's not clear. But even that, you know, like whatever the issue is with how they're receiving the data, that that is also an issue because again, like we've taken all these steps to make this information available, and it's you know even if you finally get it, the city of Boston <laughs> is not. Uh, is not equipped to like make it actionable. To act on it. Yeah, that's uh -huh. interesting. So, so I'm so I guess it in the in the actual drafting of the of this statute or I, was do you see this as potentially a pitfall in or a, a issue of the law not being crafted in such a way uh, or or I guess what's the disconnect <clears throat> here between the intent of the law, which was to make this information more accessible, allow municipalities to take this into account as they like to avoid massive gas exposure or or explosions. Mm -hmm. What what what's what's the disconnect or what are you digging at next as far as the availability and usefulness of the information? So um, uh, sort of the next step. So I am. Um, we've started a sort of new round of requests. Um, okay. It's a sort of call to action for people to get involved with this project because um, one of the sort of under, as far sort of an underutilized aspect of public records is, you know, when you submit a public records request, you're basically just asking a question. And if you ask a question, you're demonstrating that you have some sort of interest. And so um, with this project, um, sort of part of the goal is to have people submitting their own public records requests and sort of asking their own questions, even if they're not, even if towns are not requesting the information made available to them by this law, we want to know, well, what are you actually doing to take care of uh, gas leaks, you know, because the summer months are coming, the roads are all messed up, there's going to Very, be serious. As a bike commuter, I can tell you that without, without any without any footnote. Uh, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're the pretty screwed up right now, and hopefully actually, there's going to be a lot of construction in that a lot of people don't think about the fact that underneath a lot of those roads there are these pipes that may or may not have you know, leaks in them. Yeah, and so it's just, you know, one extra step to add to their workflow to say, we, and so also part of this new round of requests, there is a part of the statute that says that if um, a municipality is undertaking a major um, bit of construction, they are required to notify the gas company and tell them we are tearing up this road, can you come fix your leaks? Um, and so part of this new round of requests is to see how many people are, are actually aware that they need, you know, they need, it's not a sort of a voluntary thing, it's written mm -hmm. in, that they need to be 
like letting the gas companies know. Right. So, um, what's, so what's the actual? What is the language of the request, or what document are you encouraging people to to ask for? Um, so we we have a. a pre-made request currently that oh, so people, a template that people mm -hmm, can just come, yeah, right? um, and that people are, you can, can just clone or you can just let us know that you have a particular town that you're interested in and we will send that request out. Um, and those materials are, you know, notifications to the gas company, uh, all planned construction um, on public roadways, um, Again, the information having to do with gas leaks because we only did the greater Boston area, so we still want to leave that in there as part of the request to the other municipalities. This is kind of each each step in uh, sort of the document trail that this law was intending mm -hmm. to to create. So the so you said that the notification to two gas companies that municipalities are required to give them a heads up. Mm -hmm. We're doing construction, so you're at essentially trying to see have have they yeah, done which, that which, which would be right and that would be i assume pretty easy to then cross-reference with people in these municipalities would know if there was a major construction project and then see did they give the appropriate com yeah. communications out and then we'll, the the second part was uh instances where they've requested the information where they've requested the information from right the so it's sort of a, co a copy of the uh, original request and then these added elements, you know, if not these things, then like, what do you know about where your gas leaks are and what your what are your plans to deal with them? Um, so it's a sort of broad uh, request with more specific bullet points to try to hit, you know, get a better picture of like, what municipalities are doing Interesting. And to, take, uh, to take steps to deal with this problem. Um, yeah. Cool. So, what did what did you learn either about uh, the freedom of information, public records process through doing through doing this project and kind of move, moving forward? Uh, how how is what you're learning kind of helping you move forward with the project? Um, I think probably it's a lot of things that we uh, we run into a lot of the time, which is you know sometimes the municipalities aren't. Uh, familiar with the records that we're requesting right. so it's a little bit of like informing them about the way that things are um, because there tends to be a disconnect between especially the local level and the state level and definitely the federal right level. a law will get a law will get passed and that doesn't necessarily trickle down into here's what you need to do now which I mean we're pretty we're sympathetic to mm -hmm. that we know that like at each session I don't know the numbers in Massachusetts but at the federal level at least there are hundreds of, hundreds of bills that will get passed that in some way impact what records can be released or what records are required to be maintained, report. So I, mean, I get that answer all the time in terms of, okay, but this report was required. Right. <laughs> and then they'll say, well, we don't know what you're talking about or where it is. Right. Uh, so the, the informing aspect, that's interesting. What, what, other, what other things did you learn or how are you moving um, forward with it given what, you, given what you learned from the first round? Um, well, I think, uh, I think not necessarily something that I've learned, but something that I think will be a more effective way going forward is that being told by various municipalities, especially since they turned out to be mostly all of the municipalities, um, that's just a, you know, to go through and explain to each one, like, this is exactly what's happening and this is why I'm concerned. I think um, this project has a lot of potential to have people who are actually living in those communities, like, demonstrate that they are interested and concerned um, because these are questions that people um, sometimes don't understand or realize that they can themselves be asking. Um, so, yeah. Kind of like the civic value <laughs> of public records and something that's right. very tangible. It's not some, like, this is something that, do you, like, are you concerned that there might be a gas leak under oh. this big road? <laughs> Anybody who drives or bikes or, or in any way interacts with the road might, might be interested in in that uh and so kind of like, like you said demonstrating not only interest in government documents and transparency but this particular area i think that that's a really interesting kind of entree into government accountability and a lot of things in a way that is that's not like tinfoil hatty yeah, <laughs> you know? because i think a lot you know there are, we come across and you come across in your work a ton of instances right where people are supposed to be reporting things and they don't and sometimes it's written in sort of as some sort of way to Make people more comfortable. <laughs> um, oh, and anyway. <laughs> um, 
some sort of way to make people feel more comfortable that there is some level of accountability, but if nobody's actually following up with those steps of accountability, then you know it's not particularly effective. And I think something like gas leaks, where the people who are, you know, if something goes wrong with a gas leak, it's gonna be the people in that community who are gonna then have to deal with the consequences of that. Sure. So having <clears throat> citizens uh, be more proactive as sort of a way to encourage their government to be more proactive, mm -hmm. um, you know, Seems seems like a very like tangible potential for, for this sort of thing. Cool. Uh, since our uh, fire is giving us uh, <laughs> the the wrap up, um, uh, what's a what's a uh, public records request that you submitted recently uh, that that you su submitted and are just kind of whether on this project or, or another one that you're excited about or just like have no idea <laughs> what to expect or that you're just can't wait for the documents to. Back. Mm, well, I mean, I guess to keep it local, um, I submitted a request having to do with a cannonball that was um, detonated. You have everyone's attention. <laughs> <laughs> that cannonball, go was, on. A cannonball was found on Castle Island, which is relatively close to where we're located um, in Boston. And um, the Massachusetts State Police and the Navy and I believe the Coast Guard, they just all got together and they blew it up. Um, and um, I think we've only received responses from one of those agencies, but I don't think any documents What are were, you asking? Are you just asking for like the whatever, answer, like, incident report? Or just yeah, exactly. What, whatever did you document. Do that? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's more specific than this, but basically, whatever documents you have about what happens when you, ex you detonate a cannonball possibly from the Civil War era, I believe, is when it was from. Um, so, um, and I also submitted a request to, um, I believe, the, um, the Environmental Protection Agency, um, because, uh, you know, stuff from that, right. from that time. <laughs> Who period. knows what's in that? That's not a particularly safe era in our <laughs> history's long and passionate romance with metal. Yeah, uh, oh. yeah but um, so far, um, nobody apparently had to really report anything. So that's what we've got so far. We'll see what okay. the other agencies have to say about it. But maybe sometimes you just get to detonate a cannonball when you right. didn't. Well, with that uh, explosive FOIA uh. <laughs> request, uh, this has been uh, FOIA Side Chat. Thank you very much uh, for, for tuning in. Uh, catch us uh, the next time we do this. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter, at MuckRock. Um, and... Uh, Look at all of our reporting and requests uh, that all of our users are submitting on muckrock.com. Thanks for thanks for joining <laughs> me, Beryl. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. <laughs>